Hi friends, hi, hello, how's it going? How are you doing today? Hopefully today finds you well. Today we're doing my next haul in retrospect in which I go through the haul that I had this month a year ago and tell you how I feel about those products. Do I still have them? Do I still love them? Have I even used them? <laughs> that is the name of the game today. I hope that you're interested and if you are, please keep on watching. For those of you new here, hi, my name is Donna. I'm so, so happy to have you here today. I am a lover of all things high-end, colorful beauty and self-care. I also work in the beauty industry and I like to bring you all the education that I get from the beauty industry. Also just really love to talk about makeup and you people are my people. So I hope that you find that this channel soothes your soul in the way that it soothes my soul. And if you do, that you'll subscribe before you leave today. I would love to have you along for this crazy ride of mine and to welcome you into my YouTube family. And with that being said, let's jump into this video. All right, so in November of last year, I believe you guys saw the thumbnail of the video from last year. I lost my damn mind. I spent a whole lot of money and I had been doing so, so good that entire year. And everything in that video was not everything I had purchased because I was still waiting on a Black Friday haul to come in that I had not received yet. So this that I'm about to go over with you are those things that I purchased and went over with you in my beauty budget and recap video from November haul last year. And it wasn't all. <laughs> so I can't tell you how much money I spent last year because I didn't put it in that video because I just overspent. So the first thing on my list was this. This is the Cinema Secrets Makeup Brush Cleaner. If you're familiar with my channel, if you've been here a while, you know about this cleaner. So I'm not gonna go into it a whole bunch, but this is my holy grail brush cleaner. I do clean my brushes after every single use and I also deep clean them once a month. But this guy is a quick drying in between use kind of cleansing formula for your brushes. It doesn't do any damage to your brushes yet. It continues to make sure that 99.9% .9 of the bacteria that can grow on your brushes is not growing anymore on your brushes once you use this cleanser on it. I purchase it all the time. This isn't the one that I hauled in in that haul, but it is the one that I've currently got in rotation in my beauty room. And I just purchased another one in the Sephora sale. So I repurchase it all the time. I love it. It's amazing. It does a great job of cleaning my brushes. I can use them right away and it smells good too. So another thing that I purchased from the Sephora sale in the month of November was this. This is the Melt Cosmetics Digital Dust Duo. It is a uh, blush duo supposedly and this one is in the shade Raw Honey. So one side is raw and one side is honey and I have used it. I have. <laughs> it just doesn't look like I have because you know my collection is pretty extensive. I do have quite a bit. This is beautiful though. I feel like they are more useful as like blush toppers so not necessarily blushes but this is beautiful and melt when they came out with this collection i think there are three different colorways for this blush this is just the only one that i have and it was the first blush i'd ever tried by melt and i actually quite love it i just use it more as a blush topper or even that honey shade i will i will use this as a as a highlight on my face. It's really, really pretty. I also purchased this Patrick Ta um, blush duo in Oh She's Different. And this is one of his double take cream blush duos. And this is what it looks like. You can see I've used this cream one so, so much. And I've also used the powder one, but my preference in this duo is that cream. This cream blush was one of the first cream blushes I had ever tried and because I got along as well with it as I did, I purchased two more Patrick Ta blushes, both of them being from the monochrome moment, which is funny because they are not cream blushes. <laughs> I really do enjoy Patrick Ta blushes overall, including his powder formula. The cream formula though, my face tends to not necessarily eat blush, 
but it tends to not be as on my face as it was when I first applied it even a couple hours in. This cream blush I was floored because I put it on my face and 10 hours later went to go take my makeup off and I could still see the blush on my face which is unheard of. My dry skin likes to suck every product that I put onto it into my skin and this blush wasn't it didn't do that it didn't disappear halfway through the day so I was really quite pleased with that blush and I was really quite pleased with it enough to buy more from Patrick Ta. And then the last thing that I purchased from the Sephora sale last year was the Natasha Denona Metropolis palette. Now if you remember correctly, last year's Sephora sale, the Trio Chrome came up for grabs, right? It was a brand new palette. And I was going back and forth between wanting that one or not wanting that one. And I said in that video, the more and more that I watched people review that palette, the more I didn't want it. And then my, my man bought it for me for Christmas. And I love it. I'm glad I have it. But I also am really glad that this is the palette that I purchased from Natasha Denona in that Sephora sale because I love this palette. This quickly became my favorite Natasha Denona palette. It took over gold in my little Natasha Denona heart for favorites. It is just such a beautiful palette. There's so many wonderful shades in this. It has 11 of her creamed powder formulas in this shadow palette and they just go on so so well. So so beautifully. So so pigmented and blend just like a dream. This is such a beautiful palette and if there were one Natasha Denona palette that I would say you must have in your collection, it is this one. I do have a palette roulette on this palette. I will go ahead and put up in the cards for you. You can get such an array of beautiful eyeshadow looks out of this palette and this is the one that I would recommend over and over and over again. Then I purchased some stuff from Lunar Beauty. This palette came available again right about that Halloween time and this was the palette from Lunar Beauty that I felt like I had missed, right? It was my FOMO moment. It is the Moonspell palette. So I also have a palette roulette on this palette that I will go ahead and stick up in the cards for you guys, but um, this is also just such a beautiful palette, not only in the presentation, so it looks kind of like a spell book, but also in, I mean, look at that. That is just so pretty but also in the presentation of the shadows. I was so happy to get my grubby little hands on this palette because it was for sale and I at one point in time didn't think I needed it and then everybody and their brother was reviewing it as the best Lunar Beauty palette and then I thought I needed it and then it was out of stock and you couldn't get it anymore. So when he came out with this palette, I was like, I need to get it, I need to purchase it, and I'm not sad that I did. Um, now he has the Moonspell 2 palette out, and you know, I just don't know that I need it. My FOMO heart gets a little twisted with myself every time I say those words out loud, <laughs> but there's that. Um, I also purchased a lip gloss by him in Celine. I don't know if you guys know much about the Lunar Beauty lip gloss formula, but if you don't, this is by far the best lip gloss formula on the market, hands down. It's not sticky, it's not balmy, it's not waxy, your hair doesn't stick to it, it is gorgeous, so so gorgeous, and smells like cake. It is so good, so good. And I have like three of his lip glosses now and um, two, I think, liquid lipsticks, and I love this. This is a beautiful shade. Let me put it on real quick for you. It is just gorgeous. It is a gorgeous shade. It smells like cake batter. Kind of tastes like cake batter if you think about it real hard. I think it's because your, your smell sensory takes over and tells you that that's also what you're tasting, but it's amazing. It's amazing. So, then I also purchased some stuff from Ulta Beauty. These were one of those items. These are the foundation adjusting drops from the Ulta Beauty brand. These are amazing. I use them all the time. So you have a deepening one and a lightening one. 
that way I can buy one shade, the shade that fits me in foundation and then adjust it dependent on the time of year that I am in, right? I find that these are so much more cost effective and also efficient <laughs> than buying, you know, four different shades of foundation and trying to match myself dependent on the time of year. These were only like eight bucks. So I would repurchase them over and over again, hands down. The next thing I had purchased from Ulta is the Velour Lash Adhesive. So I purchased this because I had been wearing lashes an awful lot more than what I am currently wearing lashes and what I had been wearing lashes before, but also I'm allergic to latex. So I have to have a lash glue that does not have any latex in it. Otherwise my eyeballs swell so, so big. <laughs> so I did purchase this. I do think that this works well. I'm just not a super fan of the like eyeliner type applicator. I don't do any better with this than I did with like a brush applicator. So this isn't my favorite application method, but this is a really great lash glue, especially for those of you out there that have a latex allergy or a latex sensitivity. This would be a perfect lash glue for you. I do find that it works. I also purchased this. This is the Juvia's Place. I think they're called Color Sticks. And this one is in the shade Guinea. So when I purchased this, I actually purchased it as a like contour shade. But even in that video, when I pulled it out, I'm like, I think this is a little bit warmer than I wanted it to be. I thought it was a little more gray tone. This is not the shade that I use for contour. I definitely use a grayer tone contour more for shadows than for bronzing. However, I do use this for bronzing and I do love it for bronzing. It is such a beautiful shade and such a beautiful formula for a cream bronzer. And I think that a lot of that comes from the fact that it was formulated as a foundation, not as a cream bronzer. So it just goes on to your skin in a way that makes it look like it's actually skin, not, you know, a layer on top of your skin. It's beautiful. I even bought a secondary shade for my darker months for bronzing. So I love it. I can't find a, a proper contour shade. This one is in the shade Guinea. I think the other one that I have is in the shade. I, can, I can't remember what sh shade it's in. I can't find a proper bronzing or contour shade, but I do love those for um, bronzing. I also bought <laughs> from Ulta three ABH lip products. So I bought this ABH lipstick and this is in the shade Praline and this is actually what's on the center of my lips today. It is a really beautiful like just a uh, kind of like mauve tone. It's really pretty really pale but also goes well with just about any lip liner you put it with. It is currently in my shop my stash and I can't say that I'm mad at myself for purchasing it. What I am going to say is that I hardly ever wear lipstick. So like bullet lipstick, like lipstick period. I usually wear like lip liner and then a gloss over the top of it. So it hasn't gotten a whole hell of a lot of use in my collection, but it is a shade I would repurchase because when I do use it, I remember how beautifully it goes on my lips. It's not drying. It's a really nice formula in my opinion. And it just goes with everything because of the shade it is. If I didn't repurchase that lipstick in particular, I would be looking for something that was still that shade. And then I have these, which are her lip stains. And you guys, I bought these. Now, I haven't used the red one. That much I will tell you. I haven't used the red one, so that one was probably a ill thought out purchase because I just don't wear red and I knew that about myself when I purchased it but I did say in that moment if I'm gonna wear a red lip it will be either a pencil or a stain. I do think that this would probably get some use in my collection if I opened it up and started using it. What I will say about the stain stain so just to show you these two these two spots here I was at work and a lady came in and was looking for a lip product that would stay on her lips uh, at all times. Like despite masks, despite eating, despite everything, she wanted a lip product that would stay on her lips. And she was looking at the 
Maybelline like Super Ink or something like that. I can't remember what Super Stay, Maybelline Super Stay maybe. Um, she was looking at those because her daughter had told her that that's what she uses. But she asked me about them and then said also, I feel like they look dry on her lips. I do also, I feel like they look very dry on my lips. I don't buy Maybelline Super Stay for that reason. It does stay an awful long time on your lips, but it dries out my lips an awful lot. And it also looks dry. So I purchased these and I led her to these because I purchased them and I know that they work. These two swatches here are from me swatching the shades and showing her how to use them on my hand three days ago. Three, three days ago. I have washed my hand easily 27 times in three days and they're still there. Like those stains are so long lasting. They're so crazy long lasting. So I love them. I will continue to purchase them. So then I purchased also this Lisa Frank stuff from the collection that came out from Morphe. Now I have to say I have used these brushes and they came in a really cute bag. I'll put a picture up here if I can because I don't know where my bag is. I know it's somewhere. I know I would have never given it away but um, I don't know where the bag is. These brushes however are, are shit and shittier than most Morphe brushes. I have a lot of Morphe brushes in my collection and I have said over and over again like Morphe brushes are not my favorite brushes but in a pinch they work and they're super cheap. So like as far as the price point goes if you had to buy a Morphe brush and then replace it like six months later it would be fine because they're like six to ten dollars something like that. They're not a big deal. These are even shittier than most other Morphe brushes. I would say these are the bottom of the barrel. Oops, we effed up somewhere brushes. These are bad. These are bad brushes. And they don't stay in my little brush caddy very well because of how they're tapered down to a point at the end. They remind me of knitting needles. But I mean, they're cute. They're super bright with the cheetah print on top. They're cute. They're very Lisa Frank. But I would never recommend those brushes. They're awful. This palette I bought for the sheer nostalgia of it. Like I remember having a Trapper Keeper that had this guy on it. And I think I bought some, I did buy some Lisa Frank nail stickers that you guys saw not that long ago in a haul. Pure for the nostalgia of it. Lisa Frank was the shit when I was a kid and I, I had moments where I was like, oh, I remember. I still have sticker books full of Lisa Frank stickers. So I haven't, you know, long story short, used this palette. And I haven't used this palette because I didn't buy it to use. I bought it for the, for the nostalgia piece. I probably will use it, but I just, I haven't yet. I also hauled this in in that month, but this was a gratis item that I had received from my Benefit Arch expert. Uh, she gave me one of these and it is just a, a like a makeup caddy bag or a shower caddy bag from Benefit. Now it houses all of my, this one houses all of my other like travel bags in it but I do have two of these and one of them houses all of my pens <laughs> because I also am kind of a crazy pen hoarder so makeup isn't my only crazy. So then I purchased some stuff from FabFitFun and one of them is a headband that I think is over there. Let me go grab it. One of the things that I purchased from the FabFitFun edit sale was this. It's a headband. It's got this like knot on top. Uh, at this time last year, I had probably five headbands with this knot on top. And um, if you know, you know, if you've been around, you know this. I loved this, these headbands. I thought that they were so, so cute. Here lately, I don't, I can't remember the last time I put a headband on my head. So last year at this time though, I also had hair issues. Like I couldn't get into the salon, like 
the, you know, we had serious COVID things going on and I know that you're not supposed to say that, but I'm not monetized, so I don't give a shit. Um, we had a lot going on. I couldn't get into the salon. I had a lot of hair and I wanted it out of my face and this is how I did it. But I've been able to get into the salon lately and get my hair cut on a regular basis for the most part. So I can't remember the last time I put a headband on my head. I do love this headband though. It is red and fuzzy and just really, really pretty. And one of my subscribers had clued me into this bean in the edit sale. At that point in time, I still, I was not subscribed to FabFitFun anymore. So I took part in my daughter's edit sale to get these things. Another thing that I got was a little like <laughs> set from Marc Jacobs. I got this primer, which is the Marc Jacobs Undercover Blurring Coconut Face Primer. I haven't even used it, not one time. So I'm not sure about this primer at all. And then the other thing that came in that set was this Marc Jacobs lipstick, and this is in Sugar Sugar. I love Marc Jacobs lipsticks. They're very, very um, creamy, yet don't go all over your face. They feel really nice and hydrating on your lips and not drying. And this is it. Do you see that shade? Probably not a shade I would ever have picked. This is it. I think it's a great center of the lip shade for like lip contour, but it's definitely not a shade I would have ever purchased had I seen it in person. I also really think that the leopard print packaging is what sold me on it, to be honest because I haven't even used that primer and I don't really particularly love blurring primers if I'm honest. So the last thing that I picked up is this and this is the Sigma Edge Kabuki F87 brush and this was a brush that I had seen on the Sigma website so many times and was intrigued by it. I don't put foundation on with a brush but after I got this brush, I did try it. You can see there's a foundation stain in there for whatever reason, as much as I wash this brush, it never comes out. I think once Sigma brushes are no longer, or are not on sale at Sigma, they maybe are poop. And the reason why I say that is because this is not the only Sigma brush that I bought in a FabFitFun sale. And this brush is not good. Like it sheds all the time. I love this brush. The, um, the shape of it is really nice for getting like your foundation into the corners of your face, like the little crevices of your face. The foundation goes on so, so well with this brush. It really does. It sheds all the time. And I know that Sigma has like a two year warranty on their brushes, but the fact that I didn't purchase this at Sigma, it makes me wonder if it would ever be something that they would honor because I didn't, I, I didn't purchase it at Sigma. I purchased it at FabFitFun. And I do have like orders that I have ordered from Sigma. The brushes just don't come like this. They just don't come in, in, I mean, I can show you like the, the, like, look, can you guys see that? Like I just pulled that just barely just pulling it at they, it sheds, it sheds so, so bad. So this is, I love the brush, the shape of the brush. It's really convenient. It's really ingenious of them to make a brush like this. I just, this don't buy your Sigma brushes from anywhere but Sigma because you never know what you're going to get. I guess this is my thought process. Now I have purchased other brushes from FabFitFun that are Sigma brushes and they all kind of are in this place. I think they're the, the, like these are the all shit we effed up brushes from Morphe, but Morphe is selling them. I think these brushes that you can get at FabFitFun are the all shit we effed up Sigma brushes but Sigma won't sell them because they know that they're not good great quality yeah this that's what I think that's what I think <laughs> because I love the brush I just don't love the brush <laughs> so with that said that is my haul in retrospect for November of last year that is everything I pulled into my collection last November 
that was in my haul video and I'm really happy to report that the only thing, the absolute only thing I have not used, I guess there's two things, is this palette, which wasn't purchased to use in the first place, and this red lipstick, which I knew probably wasn't gonna see a lot of action in my collection anyways, cause it's a red, but I'm, I'm really happy to report that everything else got used and there was a lot in this haul. So what did you haul in in November of last year? I'd be interested to know if you even remember what you hauled in last year in November, but also if you've used everything that you hauled in in November of last year. And if you have used it, what do you love? What do you not love? What do you wish you had not purchased? <laughs> I would be interested to hear those things. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. I do hope that your 2021 is treating you all kindly. I hope that you and yours are healthy, you're safe, you're well. I hope that you all are loving each other, but loving each other from afar. And until next time, bye friends.